and welcome to the Ariely Knits YouTube channel. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be showing you three different ways to do a tubular cast on. The first two ways you're going to need some waste yarn and the very first way you'll need a crochet hook and for all of them you're going to need your knitting needles and your working yarn. Let's get started with this first one which is currently my favorite way of doing it. I like this way because it's really easy to remove the waste yarn after the fact and also it's easy for me to keep track of my stitches while I'm casting them on especially for projects that have you know over 50 stitches it's really handy to have. So I'm gonna bring in one of my knitting needles my waste yarn and my crochet hook to get started. So we're gonna take our waste yarn and we're gonna make a slip knot. And then we're gonna put our crochet hook in there and bring the slip knot up on the crochet hook. From here, we're gonna take our knitting needle, put our crochet hook over it, and have the yarn behind. And we're gonna grab the yarn that's attached to the ball, wrap it around the crochet hook counterclockwise and pull through. And then from here, we'll take our yarn and bring it back through the knitting needle in between the knitting needle and the crochet hook. So now there should be a loop on your knitting needle. So yarn is behind the knitting needle now, crochet hook gets crossed in front of it, wrap around, and pull through. Bring the yarn back in between them so it's behind, wrap around the crochet hook, pull through. And you're going to do that until you have half the amount of stitches that the pattern calls for. If it's an odd number, do half plus one. So we're casting on for 20 stitches, so I'm only going to do this 10 times. 9, 10, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Perfect. Then with my crochet hook here, we're just going to cut from the ball of yarn. And then I'm just going to pull that yarn through the, all the way. So we have 10 on, and then it just kind of is pulled through right here. Okay, so from here, we're going to bring in our working yarn and our other knitting needle. So let's move that waste yarn out of the way. To get started, if you're doing an even number, if you have an odd number of stitches, so say it was cast on 21 stitches, you'd put, do 11 here and you'd just start knitting and then yarn over, knit, yarn over, and then knit on the last one. But this, we're going to do it for an even one. So we're casting on 20 stitches, so we're going to tie our working yarn onto this tail of our waist yarn. It doesn't need to be like a square knot, just like a tie once, and then we're going to slide that up so that it's nice and close, like so. Then we're going to take our right needle, and we're going to yarn over our right needle, like so. I hold my yarn in my left hand, so I'm going to do that because that's what's most comfortable for me. But we're going to yarn over and then we're going to knit that first stitch that we cast on with our waist yarn. Then we're going to bring the yarn to the front, yarn over the right needle, bring the yarn to the back, and knit the next stitch on the left needle. Yarn in front, yarn over, yarn in back, knit. Front, yarn over, back, knit. And we're going to do that until all of the stitches on your left hand needle have been worked. Front, yarn over, back, knit, front, yarn over, back, knit, front, yarn over, back, knit. Beautiful. With the yarn overs, we now have 20 stitches cast on. So now we're going to turn our work. And this next part is going to be the same for all the tubular cast-ons. Once you get your stitches on, this next part is the same for all tubular cast-ons. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our yarn to the front, slip this stitch purlwise, and 
you know that it you're slipping it pearl wise because it's like a pearl on this side so this is kind of a pearl stitch that's a knit stitch and this it's really handy to be able to read your work for things like this but pearl knit pearl knit so wherever there's a pearl you're gonna slip with your yarn in front you're gonna slip it pearl wise then you're gonna move the yarn to the back and you're gonna knit the next stitch front slip back knit front slip back knit front slip back knit all the way down these waist yarn cast-ons are also really good because it is easier to read your work and see and read like, oh, this is a purl stitch, this is a knit stitch. See, that's a purl. So I'm going to slip, that's a knit, slip, knit. Okay. And I'm just pulling that closer. Then we're going to flip our work again, and we're going to do it again. So you're going to do a total of four rows back and forth of slip, yarn in front, slip, yarn in back, knit, front, slip, back, knit. So you're going to do a total of four rows that way. And then from there, you can begin working in the one by one rib of the pattern. Okay, so here we are. Now we're gonna take the yarn out and it's really, really easy. So this one that we tied onto it, um, after you take the yarn out, you'll just take a darning needle and you'll just weave it in, weave that end in to your work and it holds up just fine. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the waist yarn up through, back through that tie, or you can undo the tie, whichever you'd prefer. And then we're going to pull it, I'm going to grab my needle so it's a little bit easier, pull it through like that. Once you get to this point, it's super easy. You just pull on it and voila, it's off your work. Super easy. I love, I love that. It's so satisfying to be able to just pull it through like that. But look at this. You have a nice tubular edge. Like I was saying, I like this one because it's super easy to get the waist yarn out. It's fun to use a crochet hook. It was a fun technique to learn. I was a crocheter before, so maybe that's why I don't mind seeing a crochet hook come in. But if you've never crocheted before, seeing a crochet hook is going to be intimidating. So let me show you how to do a waist yarn tubular cast on without a crochet hook. Bringing in our waist yarn, here's our ball. Okay, so for this one, you can do it a couple of ways. You can do um, long tail cast on, backwards loop cast on. Since long tail cast on is one that most people will be familiar with because a lot of people learn with long tail cast on, we're going to use the long tail cast on for this. So we're going to leave enough yarn as a tail, just like you normally would for a long tail cast on, and again, cast on half the number of stitches. So we're doing 20, so casting on 10 stitches. So it's on, long tail cast on, Woo. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. From here, you're going to do the same thing you did as you did on the last one and we don't we don't need all of this so I'm going to just cut that from the ball. So just like in the last one, you're going to want to take the end of that yarn and tie it on to one of the tails. It doesn't matter which one that you just had cast on. And I have a couple of my knots from before, but see, just like so. There we go. See, just tie that on. And we're going to bring our right needle in. And we're going to yarn over. And then knit the next stitch. 
yarn over, knit the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, yarn over, knit the next stitch, and do that all the way down, just like on the last one. The only difference is that we put stitches onto our knitting needle with the waist yarn using a knitting technique instead of using a crochet hook. And just like before, I'm going to go back and forth by slipping with the yarn in front, move the yarn to the back, and knit. Slip, back knit, front slip back knit, and do that for a total of four rows. And now we could work in the normal ribbing. Let's talk about how to get the waist yarn off on this one. With backwards loop, if you use backwards loop to cast on your stitches at first, it'll be a little bit easier, but you just will pull that through, undo that knot on that yarn, pull that through, take the other one, pull that through, and it's a little bit more tedious than the other one because you can't just pull and it's done, but you just kind of undo it with your fingers or your knitting needles. Just like pull. So yeah, you can see why I like the crochet one a little bit more. Some you can like cut your waist yarn as you go along and then it'll just come out really easily. But if you have like over a hundred stitches that you've cast on for a sweater and you're doing this for a hundred stitches, it starts to get really tedious. Like for ten stitches it's not that bad, but hundreds of stitches it's going to be not super fun. So that's why I really like the crochet one. And then this last one with the slip knot, I'm just going to not cut, be careful not to cut my working yarn, but just cut that last one. And voila! So this is a good one if you want to use waist yarn and you don't want to use a crochet hook. So there's a way to do it with using just your knitting needles. Now for this final one, let's take it off. For this final one, you are not going to need waist yarn. So say goodbye to the waist yarn. This one is just fine to use. It's a little bit finicky. I don't like using it for big projects because the stitches get really twisted very easily and it's harder for me to read my work personally. For other people it might be easier, but for me personally it's harder for me to read my work. The biggest thing is that it's a long tail. So this is like the long tail Italian cast on, a long tail tubular cast on. It's I don't like long tail cast ons because I do not like it when I get to the end of my work and all of a sudden I realize I did not make my tail long enough. So that's one of the, that's the main reason why I don't use this one. Let's get started. So from here, we're going to make our tail for our long tail cast on and make a slip knot like usual. Put the slip knot on our hook on our needle and tighten it. Now, you're going to get ready just like you would for a long tail cast on by grabbing the yarn, sticking your index finger and your thumb through, but instead of like moving back for the slingshot, <laughs> You're going to leave it like so, okay? From here, so this first one is going to be considered a purl stitch, okay? The one that we have on our needle at the moment. So now that we have our slip knot, we're going to go under, so go over and under and up under the yarn that's closest to you, the yarn in your thumb, then go over the yarn on your index finger and then don't come back up through here come under the yarn closest to you and I don't know if you can tell let me try and focus this but that kind of makes like a stitch that looks like a knit stitch okay 
So we did under and then over here. Now we're gonna go under this yarn behind us and up through the V and over the yarn closest to us and then back under the back yarn like so. And that kind of makes what looks like a purl stitch, okay? So under, over the back, back under the front, over, under, over, so just like that, under, over, under, over, over, and then for this one, you don't cast on half the stitches, you count, cast on as many stitches as the pattern calls for, so I have two, four, six, eight, so I need 20, so we're going to do... I just did a knit one, so that means I need to start in the back for this purl one. Start in the front for knit, purl, knit. And I'm picking up the speed. If you need to go back and look at when I was slowing it down, go ahead and do that. 20, okay. So I have 20 stitches on my needle now. Just orient your stitches so that the bumpy part is all on the bottom. Now we're going to turn our work. So this is the tail, so we're not going to work with this. Keep that out of your way. Okay, keep the tail out of your way. This is the working yarn. It's attached to the ball, so we're going to... I like to wrap it around the tail yarn one more time just to kind of get it firmly set. And now we'll do kind of what we did, well exactly what we did in the other two once we got all of our stitches on, is we're going to bring our yarn to our working yarn to the front, keeping the tail out of the way, and we're going to slip this first stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, and knit. And so reading your work, you slip with the yarn in front purlwise if it's a purl stitch. So that's a purl, so slip. And then this is a knit, so we'll knit. Bring yarn to the front, slip, yarn to the back, knit. And do that all the way across. And knit, beautiful. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to do that three more times. And voila! Here you go. Another tubular edge. They all look very, very similar. It's just different ways to get a very similar look. Like I said, this one I personally don't use as much just because I, some like when I have so many stitches on, it's really easy for me to get my stitches twisted. As you saw, like sometimes it can be kind of hard to see what's going on with those stitches. But if you can do that, this is great because you don't need waist yarn, you don't need a crochet hook, you just could immediately cast on your project wherever you are as long as you have your needles in the yarn that you need without needing anything else. Those are the three different tubular cast-ons. There are, I'm sure there's a lot more ways to do a tubular cast-on, but these are just three ways for you to kind of figure out what fits best for you. Special thank you to the test knitter who brought it to my attention that a crochet hook could be really overwhelming, so it's good to give options. Thank you so much for your feedback on that. Hopefully this video will help so that people can find the one that fits best for them. So I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful day. Now go out there and craft your world. Goodbye! Goodbye!